Electroplating, which you did in the laboratory, so you're very familiar. You're already an electroplating expert. All right. Um, this has uh, a lot of uses um, in different industries. You know, jewelry is one, um, but uh, lots of other industries um, where you want to take some type of metal that is useful or wanted for some reason, but maybe it's expensive. Okay, like gold and silver, all right? So one way to make gold and silver jewelry more cheaply, cheaper, more cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. cheaper. more cheaply, cheaply is a word, isn't it? No, I don't know, it doesn't sound, really. it's a word today. Okay, um, you take some type of, you know, other metal, some uh, you, less expensive metal, like aluminum or something like that, and you just plate, put the, uh, the metal that you want, like the silver, on the surface. Okay? And that way it looks uh, uh, like a silver uh, ring in this case, but it would cost substantially less because it's not 100% silver. And in silver, that's actually a, a pretty good thing uh, or a beneficial thing because silver turns out to be a pretty soft metal. And if you have any, like, just silver jewelry, it tends to get kind of banged up because it's, it's soft. Well, aluminum's harder than silver, so aluminum would help, yeah. But gold is the hardest. I don't know about the hardest, but gold is harder. Harder than aluminum. Yeah, silver. than silver and, uh, or you, you don't have to use, I don't know if they use aluminum, maybe they use, you know, nickel or some iron alloy, and they just coat it. Um, another uh, important uh, application of plating is for uh, kinetics and catalysts. What's a catalyst do? Speeds up a chemical reaction without, without being consumed. Um, yeah, so a lot of the uh, heterogeneous catalysts that we looked at, like platinum, uh, radium, iridium, uh, palladium, those are all really good catalysts uh, for a lot of different reactions. But of course, all of those metals are pretty expensive. And as we saw in that video, all of the catalysis does it happens at the surface. Those oxygen atoms were binding to the surface of the platinum. So you don't need a big block of platinum to serve as a catalyst. You just need something there with platinum on the surface. And so you can electroplate platinum very homogeneously onto surfaces uh, to use as a catalyst. Um, and that because it's only on the surface, you use a lot less platinum. All right, so for this electrolytic cell, it's a little bit different. As you can see, uh, everything's in the same beaker. We don't have to physically separate the two half reactions, okay? So you just get one big beaker. All right, that is a big beaker. That's pretty wide, okay? Um, then whatever you want plated is your cathode, okay, where the reduction is going to occur. So if you want silver to be plated, you're going to take your silver ions and reduce them at the cathode. So you get silver plating on the cathode. Now where do you get the silver from? Well, you can oxidize it. You take your plating metal, your silver, and you make that the anode. So that's where silver is going to be ionized, or oxidized, really. So you create the anions at the uh, anode. So silver becomes silver plus one. And then silver goes swims over to the cathode and picks up its electron back. Okay. So you take an electron from silver at the anode and then you put it back at the cathode. And when silver grabs that electron, when it gets the electron back, it binds to that surface. Because that's gonna be, again, direct electron transfer, and so that happens uh, right at the surface. Now, to do uh, calculations involving electroplating, a very useful constant is called Faraday's constant. If you didn't see that coming, Faraday's constant, right here. Okay, and what Faraday's constant is, it is the charge 
of one mole of electrons. Okay, so we can calculate Faraday's constant. Something like that. Or you can know it. You just used it. Okay. So we'll just uh, calculate it using uh, Avogadro's number and the charge on the electron. So Avogadro's number is 6.022, good, times 10 to the 23rd. So that would be electrons per mole of electrons. And I actually want five sig figs, so I gotta go 6.0221. I don't normally break out that fifth sig fig, but today I need it, I need it. 6.0221. We're gonna multiply it by the charge of the electron, which is 1.602. Two, 2 times 10 to the negative 19th. What's the unit for charge again? C. 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 So coulombs. Coulombs per electron. Electrons are going to cancel out, and so we're going to get coulombs per mole of electrons. And that's Faraday's constant. So what do we get if we multiply 6.0221 times 10 to the 23rd times 1.6022 times 10 to the negative 19? It's been a while since we used, Avogad used Avogadro's number. Man, doesn't that take you back down memory lane? Good old Gen Chem 1. Oh. Oh yeah, well you calculated it, you didn't use it. And that was in the lab. I'm reminiscing about lecture. I know, it was like all the way back oozing. Forty-six. She's got the calculator. Coulombs per mole. <coughs> 96, 486 coulombs per mole. So that's how mass charge is in one mole of electrons. That's going to be useful because when we do any stoichiometry uh, problems involving electroplating, it's going to involve a per mole basis. Okay, so for every one mole of silver we want plated, we need one mole of electrons. Okay, and that stoichiometry will just be dictated by the uh, charge on the cation and how many electrons it gains and loses. 